Hello and welcome to a very special Punter's Guide. It is Super Saturday to look forward to. And as always, Jason Weaver is going to join us to try and find us some winners across the country, Jason. High class racing at Newmarket, York, Ascot, good card at Chester uh, as well. 11 races in front of the ITV cameras. It is dubbed Super Saturday. Some say it's a bit silly Saturday. So much to look forward to. Can punters take it all in? Yeah, look, it, it, it is um, a, a bit of a rarity. We know that we are pretty stacked as far as the weekends are concerned, but we're allowed one day, aren't we? Um, you know, what, what one afternoon where it is the Super Saturday and you have a whole host of different races, different disciplines. You've got little handicaps. You've got top draw group one action. It's got a little bit of everything. So if you are uh, you, you like to focus on particular races, there's an angle for everybody out there today. It certainly is. Right, let's get stuck into it then. Uh, look ahead to... Let's have a look at Ascot, first of all, because we've got the Bet Fred Heritage Handicap over the Flying Five furlongs. A big field set to go to post, 20 of them. So sort of those typical Ascot handicaps spread across the track. It's a bit of a lottery, these, aren't they? They are a little bit. I mean, when, you, when you've when you got over 50,000 up for the winner, you're going to have a fantastic turnout, and that's what we've got. A load of these were running um, either coming through the grades and looking for three timers, the likes of Burning Cash, Lovely Manor. They're going up through the grades. And then you've got other horses, the likes of Tab Deed, who was put on the floor at the Royal Meeting, and he was well fancy for that particular run. Bond Chairman ran a blinder up behind um, Latin Lover. I thought that was a fantastic run. And I go down through them, like the, my old favourite. I, I forget the amount of times that I've put up Stone of Destiny. He's down in the 80s for the very first time in a long, long time. So he's got to be respected. They put the blinkers on. It didn't work. He's an absolute freewheeling so-and-so anyway, so it's a nightmare. I, I just thought it was really interesting that David O'Mara, he got Alligator Alley off um, Joseph O'Brien, ran him back after nearly two years away from the track, put up a good performance, attracted a bit of support. He's been here, there and everywhere. Went across to Ireland last time. The ground came up soft. We're not going to get that. Decent, fast conditions, which is exactly what this lad needs. And they add the addition of a tongue tie. He's well handicapped on his best. And you're trying to find one like that in here. I mean, look, he's drawn over in stall two. Um, I'm hoping that there's a bit of pace around him. I know that Corazon, Digital, they're horses that like to go forward. He's a massive price. I mean, he's 20s. But, um, you know, when, when you sort of slot towards the top of the market in these, they've got to be so much in front of the handicapper. And at least he looks uh, as if he's on the right mark and the wrong price. Well, an alligator rally for David O'Mar, of course, retired uh, Lord Glitters, uh, didn't he, on Friday. We're going to head over to HQ then, cracking card, July Cup card, of course. We've got a juvenile contest, superlative stakes over seven furlongs. We've got Victory Dance, who won here uh, three weeks ago on Royal Ascot weekend, beating a stable mate. And we've also got this line of war, of course, out of Roaring Lion, one of only a few out of the great Roaring Lion. Yeah, he... Um... Sad that we we lost him, um, but a couple of his youngsters are, are looking as if they're pretty decent. This lad carried the penalty, absolutely zipped in. Now, what did he beat? Um, I think the second is uh, not rated particularly high on what we've seen so far. And it's into completely different company. I mean, Isaac Shelby, Brian Meehan, very bullish about him after he won at Newbury. That was under softer conditions. Um, he comes here. He also had the addition of a prep race. He had the barrier trial at Lingfield before he came out and won on debut. So sort of had that semi-experience of race course uh, racing, if you like. I've got to stick with victory dance down the bottom. When you win over course and distance and the winner set sail for home, a real well-bred newcomer from the Gosford stable, and Victory Dance came flying down the outside to get him on the line. Look, he's going to need to be much sharper. The, the Northern team, the Northern juggernaut, if you like, are coming down with this big gun. They really want to make a splash with him. He could be the superstar that Charlie and Mark have been looking for. I think they may, might play second fiddle to Victory Dance. Uh, one for the boys in blue, then Victory Dance in the superlative. Back to the Royal Race Trap then and Ascot for their feature race 
of the weekend is the Group 2 Summer Miler. A field of seven, but you can't rule any of these out. Even the outsider looks to be interesting coming over uh, from Germany. We've got Chindit, fourth behind Baid. Modern News, I wonder what last time we saw him a fortnight to go. And Mutasar back in. I think the mile may just stretch him, but it's an interesting contest. Cracking race. Yeah, um, it's funny you should mention that um, because, I mean, Muta Sarbeck, if you could guarantee that he was going to get the mile and he could be ridden conventionally, you'd definitely be siding with him. But I just have that feeling in the back of my mind that the mile seems to stretch him. He ran a cracker in the Diamed, don't get me wrong, but was he ridden to run well? Was he ridden to go and win the race or was he ridden to come home? Or, you know, I just have my reservations about him. Modern News was giving um, my Oberon three pounds when they met um, at Windsor last time. They're now back off levels today, so that's going to bring them even tighter together. And Chindit, he probably comes under that same bracket as Muta Sarbeck, doesn't he? We're not quite sure as to what his actual best trip is. Big question mark over the German runner. Um, Andreas Subrix, who trains, was a multiple champion jockey out in Germany previously. So the fact that he comes over has to be respected, but you, you, you can't go away, can you, from a My Oberon. He keeps finding a way to win. He should have got beat up at Newcastle. He won. The race wasn't run to suit at Windsor. He managed to win. In between, he's gone over. He ran pretty poorly behind Lord North, but that was up at the top level. He's just improving. If you look back at his form, the team, the Haggis team, ran him in three group ones in the early stages of his career. So he's always threatened to be a good horse. He's now starting to repay that faith. There we are, the Mayo Brown for the red hot William Haggis team. Let's head back to HQ then. And their big better race today, the Bunbury Cup, an absolute cracker. There's 20 runners down the seven field on the straight seven films, of course. We've got Montesib fifth at Royal Ascot, losing his unbeaten record. Sam Brew, now eight pound well in. After finishing sixth in the jersey. And uh, your old favourite, Jumbi, the mount of Christoph Sumion. Do you have a couple of darts in the Bunbury Cup? Yeah, I think we, we need a couple um, in here. Sam Brew, you mentioned, he's the only three year old in the lineup. Um, so, um, yeah, and he, he could be absolutely thrown in. That, that run, three lengths behind Noble Truth, was a good effort, made a middle move, got into contention and folded. Big opportunity for, for Kieran O'Neill to get him on the board. And Montesib. I mean, look, he, he ran really well in the Buckingham Palace and he, he's, he's easy. When you go down through these, you're trying to find something that's got an angle in. Well, the two angles in have got to be the horse you mentioned, Jumby. He's only ever ran over seven furlongs on three occasions. He's won two of those. He gets Christoph Sumion in the saddle as well. Um, and I thought that it was a, a cracking effort in the Wokingham behind Rohan. You know, I, I think that's very, very good form indeed. So Jumbie's got to be high on anybody's list. So we've got one in the low numbers, which is going to be down towards the stands rail. We need something high just in case it evens itself out. And I thought that Silent Film um, ran at the, the Royal Meeting. Now, he won over in Maidan. He won over in Sakia. Um, and then he comes back, his first start over here, he was drawn on the wrong side at the Royal Meeting and basically couldn't win from where he was. All the action happened over on the far side and he's behind a few rear poles in here, the likes of Ropey Guest and all of those that were in, the, in that race at the Royal Meeting. But he wasn't given a hard time once his chance had gone. We still don't know how good he could be and he's drawn in high numbers. So up on high, silent film, he's an each way prize. Jumbie. Got a good record over seven. Two against the field in the Bunbury Cup, then. Yeah, interesting jockey booking, isn't it, Christoph Sumi? Coming over to ride perfect power. Eve Johnson Horton snapping him up to ride Jumby. Right, another very competitive handicap up at York this time. We've got the John Smith's Cup, 10 furlongs, Joe at 405. William Haggis loves a the winner there. He's on fire. He's got Mara Jean, Shadwaga, and Mara as well. And Rogue the Bear, I mean, placed in a Lincoln, a Spring Cup and the Hamilton already this season, will he get his big break? Another belter here. Yeah, absolutely. I feel a little bit sorry for, for Rogue Bear. I mean, I don't really know what his ideal trip is. He's one of those who's just been unlucky in those big races, and they're now trying to, to stretch him out. Old favourite of mine, Caradoc, he's definitely got a big one in him, but when will he turn up for the Ed Walker team? Uh, and you mentioned um, and Mark off the back of his run, when we saw him at the back end, he would have to have a claim. However, 287 days off coming back in here in a competitive handicap has got to be a worry. And then Jane Chapel-Hyams, intelligent 
who's in there, ran an absolute stormer at the Royal Meeting. So we've got all of the favourites, all of those ones that drag you in uh, uh, regularly. However, right down the bottom, and he's only slotted in because he carries the £5 penalty, his first view for Saeed Bin Sarur and Stefano Churchy. Now, he was doing, I think, OK over in Maidan without pulling up any trees. He had a massive layoff. He comes back, runs a decent second. He wins very, very smoothly at Leicester last time over the mile. Complete unknown as far as the trip is concerned, but he shouldn't have any problems with it the way he finished at, at Leicester. And I think that he's easily zips under the radar. I'm not expecting him to continue up through, through the... Um, the ratings like Real World has done for Saeed Bin Sarur. But talk about slotting in at the right end of the handicap. No weight, big price, unexposed at the trip. Admittedly got to come, overcome a bad draw. But um, yeah, I think he's flying in well under the radar. Yeah, Saeed Bin Sarur got previous as well, hasn't he? In at York handicap. So interesting, right at the bottom of the weights, finest view. For Jason, the John Smith's Cup. And then the feature race of the day, the feature on a very busy and excellent day's racing is, of course, the Group 1 uh, July Cup, over six furlongs. We've got the one, two, three from the Platinum Jubilee, Naval Crown Creative Force and Artorias, taking on the three year the Commonwealth Cup form, of course, headed by Perfect Power. Another cracking Group 1 sprint. Yeah, I, I, I really don't know what your your view is. Like, are the three-year-olds um, going to be able, in receipt of that weight allowance, to go with the real speedsters? I mean, perfect power just looks really, really good. The easy option would have been for them to go to France, but they've come here to take on, you know, the, this is the race. This is the biggest race of the weekend. The prestige of winning the July Cup is so much bigger than going to France. I mean, Flaming Rib supplemented for the contest. Um, you've got um, Cadamosto ran an absolute cracker with the blinkers on just the other day, but he was put in his place really, wasn't he, by perfect power, and you can't see him turning that form around. But why on earth? And um, I, I bumped into James Doyle when he rode a double up at Yarmouth earlier in the week. Naval Crown, he's only ever ran over this trip twice, once on debut, once last time. Prior to that, they were running him over much further. He comes back down. He won on the wrong part of the track for me at the Royal Meeting, all on his own. There were nine runners on the stand side. He won. The next horse in that group was back in 14th spot. Like a huge amount. If they'd have been staggered, I'd have said, oh, the ground's OK. But he just seemed to get away with it. I think he flies way under the radar. So I'm going to take um, Naval Crown to spoil the party for perfect power, I think will run well. Artorius, he'll get lost early and flash home money, the typical, usual one of those, or oh, a little bit unlucky and should have won. Uh, yeah, I think that um, Naval Crown goes under under the, uh, un not under the radar, because he's banged there and he's about six to one for James Thor, but he's underestimated. Yeah, I think he is. He's a big price with the Platinum Jubilee. Now he's got to prove that wasn't a fluke in the July Cup and every chance of doing so. Could be a good day, of course, uh, for Godolphin then. Right. Six races looked at, loads more to look at uh, as well. Join us on our social media pages and in our shops to get Jason's thoughts on all the other races. But um, the best bet of the weekend is amongst those six. Is it another one that we have maybe looked at? I mean, where would the, the best bet be, become on, a, on an incredibly busy day? I think you'd probably probably be hard-pressed to, to get something as solid as my Oberon. I know that he's got the £3 weight turnaround, but I was looking at the prices and he's not favoured. And that's because I'm leaning against Muta Sabek getting the mile. You know, I think that he'll get up to the half furlong marker and just had enough. And my Oberon will be absolutely powering home. So I think my Oberon would rate the, the strongest on the card. And then I, I often, I, as you mentioned, like one at a, at a bit of a price. And definitely Saeed Bin Sarur's first view is underestimated in the John Smiths. There we are then, two for the day. Looking forward to a great day's race. And Jason will be a busy man in front of those ITV cameras. Enjoy the racing, plentiful as it is. Hopefully the best of luck, whoever you're back in. Please gamble responsibly.